man who was charged with a felony for passing out jury rights flyers uh, in front of a courthouse. Now, these, uh, these flyers, they're distributed by the Fully Informed Jury Association. What is so damning in these pamphlets? Yeah, you need to look, go to Fija.org and take a look at this pamphlet that strikes fear into the hearts of tyrants because that's what these guys are. It doesn't matter what he's passing out on the sidewalk, Leanne. It could be the Communist Manifesto, whatever. Uh, we have the right to pass these things out. Uh, we've seen this happen repeatedly. This is a grassroots movement that is going on across the country. There really isn't any organization or center to it other than just a small website that has this pamphlet and tells you what the law and what the tradition is. And this is one of our most important powers. With this, we can stop tyrannical judges. And understand, when they arrested this guy for simply handing out literature on the sidewalk, they were trying to keep him in jail over the uh, Thanksgiving weekend. They set excessive bail as well. $150,000 bail wow. for handing out a pamphlet. That's absolutely outrageous. Of course, he had to put down 10% of that, $15,000 he put on his credit card. So this lawyer that we're going to be talking to, I think, is a real fighter. He has subpoenaed the judge, the prosecutor, the assistant prosecutor, and the magistrate who set that excessive fine. So we're going to talk to him. It's very interesting. But let me briefly tell you that you need to get this and you need to understand what this is truly about. This is the way that you shut down uh, the tyrants in this country. It goes a very long tradition, going back to William Penn uh, in England, and then a very long tradition with the uh, colonists in this country. We had both the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists, both uh, Thomas Jefferson and uh, John Adams, both saying this is a vital right of yours. And we've had recent court decisions. In 1972, we had DC Court of Appeals said you have the right to uh, do jury nullification. And we've had repeatedly, just as we've uh, talked about, mentioned briefly, the Denver courthouse has lost a second attempt to shut down the same kind of activity in Denver. People simply handing out information. You have a right to do this. It's called free speech. It's called the First Amendment. Courts don't like that. So get that pamphlet. Start your own movement because all we need is 8% of the people, one out of 12, who will stand up and refuse to convict people if the law is being misapplied, if it's an unjust law, not simply about the facts of the cases, the judge will lie to you about this and they right. will try to lock people up, and, but they always lose. And we're gonna talk about that when we come back. Yeah, this is incredible. And they're actually trying to now make this a federal case. And the judge used to actually explain to the jury about jury yes. nullification, but then that of course has been omitted. And now he says, you have to interpret the law as I am describing it to you. And that's it. And if he tries to uh, tries to take this further with this, he's going to have to explain to a jury what this Fiji uh, pamphlet was about. It'll wow. be an interesting catch twenty two. This is going to be pretty incredible. So we'll see this kind of worldwide. All right, thank you, David. So that interview will be coming up, and then of course we're going to be showing you some more uh, contest entries for the Make Fun of Hillary contest, and then Alex Jones with his take on what's happening here with the American Caliphate. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a, a workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to give my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which one I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity. 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, and having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things. And if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, Infowars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle and Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Welcome back. We're going to talk to the lawyer, the man arrested in Michigan for passing out literature in front of a courthouse. So you would think that might be First Amendment, but it got the ire of the judge because it was about jury nullification. Joining us now is Dave Coleman, the attorney of uh, the accused, uh, Keith Wood. He is with the Coleman Legal Group in Lansing, Michigan. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Coleman. Uh, my pleasure. Glad to be here. Tell us a little bit about uh, your first reaction when you heard about this case. Well, it's quite surprising. It, it's, you know, as an attorney, you hear lots of uh, clients and lots of different things that are happening, and you're always wondering if you're getting the whole story. And the more we heard and the more the facts came out, it was just astounding to us uh, what happened to this gentleman. Tell us the facts of the case as, as you know them. Well, there was uh, uh, a trial, or I think a few trials, that were scheduled to uh, start last uh, a week or so ago in Macosta County. And our client had been reading literature and things online and got a hold of a, uh, a flyer that... Uh, talks about the rights of jurors and the rights to vote their conscience during trials. And he decided that, well, I'm going to go and hand this out in front of the courthouse and just try to educate people and let them know what their rights are as jurors. And of course, he was just handing it out to anybody who was willing to take it. He didn't know if it was a juror or if it was just somebody working at the courthouse. He didn't know who it was. He was just handing out the information. So that's what he was there doing. And, uh, Apparently, a number of jurors did pick up the brochure as they were coming in and were sitting in the jury pool at the, in the courtroom reading the brochure. And the judge uh, asked about the brochure and didn't like uh, what he saw in there. And so one thing led to another. Um, there were a number of requests from uh, a, a detective and a deputy sheriff. They were asking him to come into the courthouse to speak to the judge. He declined to do that, asked them was he, you know, if he was doing anything wrong, and they said no. And he said, well, I'd just like to stay here and hand out my flyers. And finally, <laughs> the last time the deputy came out, he said to our client, well, if you don't come in to speak to the judge, uh, we're going to call the city police and have you arrested. He never said what for or anything else, but just threatened him with arrest. So at that point, our client obviously didn't want to get arrested, so he agreed. He went into the courthouse and into the hallway of the, of the, the courthouse. And it was at that point 
he actually was questioned by the prosecutor. And the judge was there, and the judge ordered um, the deputy sheriff to arrest him for jury tampering. And the judge never spoke to our client or had any interaction with him. And he was arrested. Uh, he stayed in jail all day. Later in the afternoon, they brought him in front of a magistrate who set a $150,000 bond wow. for handing out a juror, wow. pushed a, a flyer about your rights as jurors. I well, mean, you it's know, unbelievable. Mr. Mr. Coleman, I seem to remember that we have a First Amendment about free speech, and then I also remember that we have uh, uh, prohibitions in the Bill of Rights about excessive bail and excessive Absolutely. fines. Absolutely, Article 8. Yeah. I, it's just unbelievable that a $150,000 bond would be posted. And remember, this was just a day or so before Thanksgiving. Wow. I, I think that the, the obvious intent was to make him stay in jail over the long weekend and miss Thanksgiving. And tell but, us about uh, the defendant, uh, Keith Woods. He gives a little bit of a background of him personally. Sure, he's a young father. He's in his late 30s. He has seven children. Mm. Um, he has his own insurance brokerage business and uh, that he's been running for a couple of years now. He's not a wealthy person by any stretch. Mm -hmm. and, former pastor, uh, right? Right, former pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, had moved uh, into the Big Rapids area and just, you know, was, was interested, had heard about uh, some cases that were going on. And there was a farmer, an Amish farmer up in Macosta County who was being prosecuted for violating wetlands laws and, I guess, filling in an area of, the, of his uh, property so he could um, grow crops and then was being prosecuted for doing that. And so there were a number of people upset about that all through the community. And so that's what kind of got him interested in it. And he started... Uh, uh, again, yeah, it's, 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 it offends his basic sense of justice as uh, as a yeah. former pastor, as, as a father. He doesn't want to see this kind of stuff going on. But, of course, there was right. nothing about that particular case in this pamphlet. I've got the pamphlet right here. Uh, right. We printed it out. It's a feature pamphlet. It's been around for years. And one of the right. first things that I did when I came to work here for uh, uh, InfoWars, uh, it was uh, part of a uh, contest. And the person I talked to was an activist, longtime activist, a retired uh, college professor, Julian Heichlin. And he was going around the country handing out pamphlets, and he's getting arrested all over the country, not just uh, mm -hmm. in New York and other places. One of the interesting things about it was that they, were, they usually would drop the charges. He was very concerned that he would get injured when they came to arrest him. So when they, they would start to approach him, he would literally lay down on the ground and, and put his hands out, and he would have somebody filming him because he said, that's where they're really going to hurt you. They're going to slam you to the ground. He was an elderly man at the time. And so mm -hmm. he was going around all over the country doing this, but he would stand up uh, for his First Amendment rights. You know, it doesn't matter if this was a pamphlet on Marxism. Uh, he has a right. right to hand that out, uh, and it's a general, generalized pamphlet. There's nothing specific about any particular case. The same thing that uh, Dr. Heichlin was doing everywhere he went. Right, exactly. And, this, and people need to understand this isn't really an issue about jury nullification. This is an issue of free speech. Yes, exactly. He was, he was standing on the public uh, sidewalk. It's a public forum. And he has the right to give out general information or his opinion, right or wrong. I mean, people can disagree on whether the information in the pamphlet's correct or not. Yes. So what? It's free speech. He has the right to express his opinion. Ah, but that's, course, the, the, that's the, the crux of the <laughs> issue, isn't it? That the yeah. judge doesn't want people to actually use and express their opinion. He doesn't want jurors to be informed. He doesn't want them to be informed with this. And that's what he really hates. So the interesting thing is what happens next. You've got a preliminary hearing on Tuesday. Tell us what may happen at that point. Right. Well, let me mention, too, that all the jurors that had received the flyer and were in the courthouse, uh, the court officer um, confiscated all the flyers from the jurors that were in the courtroom. They took them all away from them. Mm. And I find that very interesting. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is in Michigan, we have case law that says very clearly that juries have the right to vote their conscience and to vote someone not guilty, uh, regardless of what the law is. They have the absolute right to do that. Is that in so, the Michigan Constitution uh, where it well, says it's that? it's not in the Constitution, but there's case, there's case law in Michigan yes. that supports that. Now, yes. what happened, these cases deal with situations where defendants were asking judges to give jury instructions about jury nullification. And so the cases all say that uh, a judge cannot be forced to give an instruction to this effect, but it upholds the right of individuals uh, and jurors to find somebody not guilty, regardless of what the, the elements are of a crime or anything else, just based on their conscience and sense of fairness and decency. And that is so, a long-established <laughs> principle, and we talked about that yeah, just before absolutely. the interview. And, and we had a situation in New Hampshire where 
judges were making recriminations against attorneys,